Okay, this is the uh, engine compartment of the 1970 Chevelle. It's an SS style car. Uh, it does have a big block. That's the way all these guys came. Uh, it started with a 396 or a 402. This particular one designates it to be a 396 car. Uh, it's a power steering. It has power brakes on it. Does not have air conditioning. Um, it is, from what I can see, a real SS car, but we'll tell once we get underneath it. The uh, fender wells are semi-flat black, just the way they should be from the factory, as is the uh, under hood. It's a cowl induction style hood. It does not have a cowl induction functional system on it. It has a 14-inch uh, low, low restriction air cleaner that would have been correct for the car. So, of, uh, of course, it has chrome top on it and uh, the 350 horse designation on it. It has a set of Moroso chrome valve pan covers with the T-nut uh, adjusters to tighten them down. Somebody like chrome on this thing. Uh, it's got a uh, chrome gooseneck on it, chrome alternator, chrome alternator bracket, chrome hose extensions for your uh, heater hoses, that which are still intact and operational for the passenger compartment. Chrome alternator, chrome pulley wheels. Uh, <laughs> Pretty much anything that you could chrome is chrome uh, timing chain cover, uh, chrome distributor, HEI distributor cover on it, chrome um, cover for the uh, top of the radiator where it transitions over to the uh, uh, fan shroud itself, chrome cap for the uh, radiator, chrome hardware for the uh, stainless wraparounds that uh, are on the uh, hoses, the uh, heater hoses, not the bottom one but the top one and the uh, heater hoses. So, um, also, they put a set of, uh, appears to be, Corvette style, uh, big block Corvette uh, uh, wires on it also, which are also encased in uh, stainless wrapping. Uh, chrome cap for the uh, uh, dual stage master cylinder also. Somebody went crazy with the chrome on here. They must have liked chrome. They like shiny stuff. Uh, it has a standard cast iron intake manifold on it. It's painted silver to make it appear as an aluminum one. It is not. It is a cast iron one, from what I can see anyway. It appears to be. Although it could be, it could be a, a intake off of a, um, a 390 horse Corvette. So it's, it is possible it is aluminum. But at any rate, it looks to be uh, aluminum. The uh, Wires are all nicely routed the way they should be. There's a shut off for the battery on, in it, uh, so you can shut the battery off if you're going to have it parked for a period of time. Uh, correct high flow radiator for a big block. Correct fan shroud also for it. It has a uh, seven blade flex fan on it at this point. The uh, engine compartment is really nice and clean. There's no leaks evident whatsoever on the valve pan covers, the timing chain cover. Uh, nothing at all appears to be uh, uh, leaking. The motor appears to have been out, not, I'm not going to say a thousand miles ago, but relatively recently and completely uh, freshened up. Has a set of uh, long tube, um, I'm going to call them two inch, they may be two and an eighth, but I'm going to call them two inch uh, primary tube headers on it. And I don't see anything out of place on this thing. It's just really a nice, well presented engine compartment. Uh, these motors made anywhere from 350 to where well, this thing has a little bit of a cam in it, a set of headers. So you're probably somewhere really getting close to uh, probably 380, 390 horsepower, awful close to 400 horsepower in the motor. Very torquey engines, uh, nice mild mannered engine also. Uh, it's a uh, oval port motor instead of a rectangular port, so it's not a real high RPM motor. Uh, just a nice clean engine compartment with a great big block Chevy in it and a uh, SS style Chevelle. Hi, you're at Hanksters in Daytona Beach, Florida. And uh, today we're going to go over a 1970 Chevelle SS style car for you. It is a, a big block Chevelle in SS. Uh, it appears to be that way originally. Uh, but we're going to go over everything aesthetically right now for you, show you any defects we can find. Uh, and we'll just uh, completely present the car to you, undercarriage, uh, paint, interior, everything. So you have all the information you need to uh, help you in your purchase of the vehicle. Okay, um, first thing I notice on the hood, this is a driver quality car. This is not a show car. Uh, it's a driver quality car. It presents itself well. Anyone walking around this car is not going to see the things that I'm going to point out to you at this point. If you notice the hood, is just like one shade darker silver than the fenders are. 
apparently it's in the clear. I think it's in the clear anyway. Whenever they cleared the hood for whatever reason, uh, maybe redoing it because of stone chips or marks or whatever have you, uh, they just were off one shade. And silver is a very difficult car to uh, match. Um, at any rate, uh, the, the finish on the hood is um, a little bit darker on the hood than it is on the fenders or the remainder of the car. Uh, the gap is real nice on it. Uh, stripes are cleared over. This is all clear, so you can't even feel the stripes on this car. You can see them, but you can't feel them. Uh, the fitment of the hood actually is very good, uh, up to the uh, fender, to the uh, headlight basil bucket, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the correct style hood pins for a 1970 Chevelle on it, stainless steel hats on them. Uh, you can see the gap is real nice on the, uh, on the hood to the fender. Again, no collar induction functional vent on the back of this. It is a collar induction style hood. It is not a functional collar induction system on a car. That was an option. This car did not come with it. The buckets are on the headlights. A uh, little tiny bit of patina right here uh, at the base of the, uh, the chrome. Less on this one than that one, but they both do have some patina on them. Just from age, it's, it's chrome, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get little tiny, tiny pits. You won't see it in the video, you probably won't see it when you're walking around it, but I'm telling you, it's there. Uh, the grill, the uh, aluminum pieces that surround the uh, plastic part of the grill. It's a double section grill and it's not hammered or dented or marked in any way, Chevrolet designation, SS designation in the center because that's what it is. The uh, front bumper, bumper fitment is very nice on it. Also the chrome on the bumper on the top, um, no one has gone through and put their feet up on it or, or caused any uh, scuffs or scratches or anything on the top of the bumper. Clear lights in this guy and they are crystal clear also. Front of the bumper, the chrome appears to be nice. Let's see. Yeah, there's no marks or dinghies or, or any indication that anything is bumped into it. Nobody ran into the garden tractor or anything with it through the years. Everything appears to line up as it should in the front. Uh, it's a great looking car. It's a great color combination. As you can see, the hood is just one shade off from the fenders. Uh, but other than that, it, it's a good looking car. There are you can see some, whoever did the, the paint on this hood, I don't know why they did it, because you can see it's never been damaged, but the hood itself has some imperfections in it. You can see some light crow's feet underneath the clear, because it could be the original lacquer still on the hood on this car. Uh, maybe they went back and redid the striping or something. For whatever reason, uh, the hood is just one shade off from what the uh, rest of the car is. Let's go around the rest of them, we'll see what we'll find for you there. Okay, our driver's side, uh, side marker lamp, real nice fitment on that, couldn't be any better than it is. Um, wheel arch molding, just as nice and tight as can be, no marks whatsoever. Uh, SS396 designation on the side, because that's what it is. The hood fitment to the fender, to the door, look at this. Very, very nice fitment, very nice, can't get any better than that. Correct wiper arms and blades on this guy. It does have the original wiper arms and blades. Sunshade fade uh, windshield on it. Dashboard, I don't see any imperfections at all. No cracking, absolutely evident. Nothing. Nice as can be. The um, dashboard where it transitions to the base of the windshield, spot on. Can't be any nicer. Vintag, nice and legible, not all rusty or corroded up like a lot of them that you see. Trim around the front window. About as nice as you're ever going to find one. There's no marks anywhere. Correct style mirror. You got one on each side. How about that? Correct style mirror for uh, 1970 on this car also. Obviously it has a vinyl top and nice tight fitment. There's no indication of it lifting anywhere, no bubbling whatsoever, even in the drip row area. Just as nice a fitment as you could ever hope to have on a vinyl top. Drip rail. Flawless, no marks whatsoever, and it transitions back to the uh, base of the uh, 
mine will pop as nice a fit as you could ever hope to find. <coughs> and no dead stains whatsoever. And check this out. Look at the uh, uh, front window to the rear quarter glass. And no patina whatsoever on this piece of chrome, which is usually deteriorated. It appears to have uh, either tinted windows or shaded windows on the sides also. And in the back. Door handle, the chrome is just absolutely as it would be for a new one because it could possibly be. Look at the door fitment on this guy. It is as nice as you could ever hope to find. Wipes whiskers. Replace an absolute precise fitment where the uh, metal goes on to the top of the quarter panel and the top of the door. You can't even get your fingernail underneath it. It is as precise as you could ever hope to fit that. Paint on the door is very nice. The paint down inside this car is really exemplary. Uh, I haven't seen any marks. I did forget to mention one thing. There are, and we're going to brush touch them, and they're not going to need repainted, but there are a couple of real light chips here. I noticed when I ran my hand over it that I did uh, see them. They just need a little tiny brush touch. That's it. But you'll see them in the video, so I just wanted to point it out. Quarter panel, really, really nice. Uh, wheel arch molding, no dents whatsoever. Um, we'll have to look underneath it when we get under the car, but instead of being real sharp on the edges here, the, uh, the metal appears to, or uh, feels like it's intact the way it should be, but someone has filled it in with either some type of an undercoating or um, Probably not a bad idea. Instead of having a 90 degree angle in there for material, any kind of garbage to collect in there through the years, they transitioned it with a uh, radius in it so that nothing can lay there. Water, nothing will just uh, run right out. So we'll have to look at it a little closer once we're underneath it. Uh, rear shelf is nice and clean as you'd ever hope to have. It has two uh, high end speakers in it. Trim around the rear light, which is tinted. Uh, no marks or dingies whatsoever. And again, the trim at the base of the uh, vinyl top is nice as you could ever hope to find. It's really, really a straight, straight-looking car. This is uh, kind of radius in there too. We'll have to look at that underneath. See what we got. Side marker lamp in the back for 1970, and we got the whole side of the car done for you. The uh, wheels are 14 inch SS wheels, uh, it was an option on the uh, uh, Chevelles and Camaros and uh, this particular wheel is a, it's a Kelsey Hay style wheel, Mopar used them, Oldsmobile, Buick, Ford, everybody. Mopar were the first guys to actually use a Kelsey wheel when that designed uh, back in the uh, middle 60s. But anyway, that's a nice set of wheels, it's got a set of Firestone white letter outline tires on it. A great look inside of the car. It's very, very straight. Uh, of course, you know, I can't say laser straight because uh, in a 70 Chevelle, it does have some contours both on the front fender to the door to the uh, quarter panel. They're kind of balls here and there. But a real nice fitting uh, car, both fender, door, and, uh, and quarter panel. Great look inside, other than those two little stone chips. Good to go. Let's do the back. Okay, tail section of our 70 uh, SS style Chevelle. Uh, look at this, eighth of an inch the whole way around. And again, driver quality paint, not show quality, but a nice driver quality paint job on it. You can't feel the stripes. There's a lot of clear on this car, and uh, there's no stripes that you can feel, but obviously they're there. Uh, Chevelle by Chevrolet designation. And this bumper fits just like the front one, absolute precise. Can't be any better than it is. Correct style tail lamps in it. Nice clear lenses. SS uh, rubber pad across the back with the uh, SS designation on it. No dingies, no marks in the chrome. Again, no one's dragged anything out of the trunk over top of the bumper so that there's no marks or scuffs or scratches at all on it, absolutely none. Let's see the bottom panel here. Okay, the rear valance fits absolutely precise on this car. Can't fit any better than it does. It's just absolute precise fitment. Uh, it has the correct style 1970 uh, oval 
stainless exhaust tips out the back just the way it should be for the year. Uh, everything lines up in the back end of this car as good as you could ever hope to find one. Chrome's all great. Everything's nice. Uh, one more side to go because there's nothing to show you back here. Okay, our last side. Passenger side. <clears throat> side marker lamp. Again, just as sweet as you could possibly find. Again, this is, this is kind of rolled in the same way this other side was. Uh, we'll have to look at it from underneath, but it feels like it's all tin, but someone's radiused it so that nothing can lay in there. But we'll take a look once we get underneath it. Uh, paint is really, really nice on the side of this car. Wheel arch. Okay, that's three for three. No dinghies, dents, nothing whatsoever on them. Uh, trim around the base of the uh, vinyl top and around the rear glass. No dinghies whatsoever. Really, really nice fitment. And again, this top is really great condition. There's no bubbling whatsoever on it in any of the corners around the drip rail. Absolutely nada, nothing. Okay, white whiskers on the back of the corner here. Uh, I see something right off the stick. The door needs to be adjusted in. This thing's hanging out about an eighth of an inch. It's just an adjustment that we're going to do. It actually has to come up a little tiny bit and in. So whenever they adjusted the door, they didn't do it correctly. We'll do it though. Uh, drip rail just as nice as you'd hope to find. No marks, no dents whatsoever in it. Again, look at the glass fitment on this thing. Nice as you'd ever want. There is absolutely no patina whatsoever evident on these uh, chrome pieces that uh, hold the weather strip the seal between the front window and the back window. White whiskers on this top of the door is just as nice as it was on the other side. Door handle is absolutely like brand new. Mirror, right hand mirror. You've got to have one of those. And this guy has it, has it already. Don't have to put it on. Tiny bit. When that door goes in, this is going to come up just a little tiny bit, and then it's going to be a precise fit door, just like the other one was. But anyway, uh, everything is fitting up as it should. It, 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 the alignment is good. It's just that there's an adjustment there. That's it. Trim around the front window on the side. No dents whatsoever. Again, the uh, wiper blades correct for the year. The um, SS designation 396. This is four for four, no dents whatsoever. Nobody whacked the door open at the Walmart on it. And front marker light, just like the other three. Precise right on. Again, our Kelsey wheels, white letter outline tires. Forgot to mention, there is a, a rocker panel molding on the other side, obviously one on this side. And neither one has any heel marks or dents or anything in it. There's nice linearity to it underneath the, uh, underneath the doors. So, uh, you don't have anything to address there, or we don't have anything to address there. I think it bothers me is this being off just a shade. But other than that, the paint on this car is really nice everywhere. Uh, it's a very, very nice uh, paint job. has uh, a lot of look to it. It's silver and black. Bucket seats, black vinyl top. SS style wheels on it. Outline white letter tires, Firestones. They're just a, it's just a great looking car. It's a 70 Chevelle. Uh, a car that everybody is looking for, um, 66, 67s, and 70s, and um, it's just a nice example of it in a driver quality car. This is not going to be a fifty-five, sixty thousand dollar Chevelle. This car is going to be priced very nominally for what we have here. It's a great car. It presents itself well. It drives well, which we'll see here shortly. I did use the car for a day, so I know how it runs. It's just a really great looking. Uh, example of a 1970 Chevelle. Somebody would very be very, very happy with this car to have it as a showpiece or an everyday driver. Uh, again, it's not the paint quality is driver quality. It's not a 100-point show car. And we're not trying to present it that way. But what we are trying to do is present everything that we possibly can that we picked out on this car. You can see I did pick out some things. So that's why we're doing these films. We're doing the films and Devin's doing the videos and the uh, uh, 100 photos are awful close to it, high resolution, so that you can see everything that we pointed out. And maybe you'll pick out some things that I missed somehow. 
try my very best to catch everything, but I can miss some here and there. That's why we encourage everyone to come down, take a look at the car. Airfare is cheap. Just jump on a bird, come down, take a look at the car. You can spend all day looking at it. Put it up on a rack, drive it, look at it, have fun with it all afternoon. And then you know exactly what you're buying here from Hangsters. We're not trying to hide anything from you. We're trying to present everything to you that we see. But if we miss something, I apologize. You know, I try my very best to catch every little aspect of this. We miss some things sometimes. We try not to. So take a look at it. It's here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. Okay, this is the interior of our uh, 70 uh, Chevelle SS style car. Um, silver, black stripes, and black in. Um, headliner nice and tight just the way it should be. How about that? Functioning uh, dome light in it even. The uh, dash from looking on the outside it looked like it was absolutely flawless and it looks the same way in here. There's absolutely no imperfections, no cracks, no warpage, nothing whatsoever on it. The correct style instrumentation for an SS car. It does have a tachometer, a speedometer, a clock which is not working. Um, fuel gauge, temp gauge, amp gauge. Oil pressure gauge is auxiliary and it's underneath the dash. It has a Mickey Mouse radio in it. I don't even know what kind it is. It has the correct uh, steering wheel, SS designation in the center. It has a wrapping around the wheel. I can't tell you if there are any cracks or anything in it without taking this off. It doesn't feel as though there are any separations in it though. It feels like a nice solid um, uh, wheel. Okay, uh, heater controls just as nice and clean and fresh as you'd ever hope to find. SS de designation on the doors, nice clean uh, actuators and window cranks, both of them, left and right. The uh, armrests are the molded style armrests that came with this car. The headliner is, like I said, nice and taut. The uh, sun visors, no stitching coming loose and nice padded just the way they should be from the factory. The um, see what else I can see. Oh, the light for the uh, rear passengers is even actuated in the uh, base of the console here. Uh, glove box in the uh, console. It now doesn't want to latch. What the heck? Okay, we'll have to fix that. Uh, glove box in the dash. Original owner's manual still in it for the Chevelle. Can't figure this guy out though. I don't see anything that's in the way, but it doesn't want to close. The um, kick panels are all nice the way they should be with their uh, vent, uh, uh, astro ventilation actuators still intact. The side panels in the back have ashtrays in them, trash trays in the back, trash tray in the front. Seat belts in the back, seat belts in the front, and shoulder belts. So this thing has a uh, complete complement of uh, safety equipment for that era, for 1970. This is about all you could get back in. I didn't even know what an airbag was back then, unless something you blew up and went bang with. Um, the correct style seats, interior-wise, in the back, and they also match the front. They have that basket weave type insert in them that uh, they used in 1970 in the Chevelles. Just a really nice looking uh, a set of seats in this car. Correct style seats and a correct molded headrest too. Uh, they're not the uh, ones that are covered up with the stitch material. These are the actual molded headrests, both of them, that uh, came with this car in 1970. Uh, loop style carpeting, console. Uh, all the chrome in this console, by the way, is very, very nice too. It's not. Uh, deteriorated at all. Usually this chrome around the uh, surround is, is deteriorated. There's usually a little tiny bit of patina on it. This one has none. Original style staple shifter in it. The uh, rubbers just as nice and fresh as you'd ever hope to find on this vehicle. Uh, and you don't see anything at all out of place in this other than a glove box that won't close. can't understand that. I quit. Thing got me going here. Yeah, okay. Now I close. Um, real nice high end interior in this. Everything is as it was in 1970 when this car was new. There's no deterioration on the top of the uh, uh, panels, the side panels in the back. Usually they're somewhat uh, side uh, sun faded and 
you know, just deteriorated through uh, age and uh, usage and sunlight. Sunlight destroys everything. And the front ones are the same way. There's absolutely no deterioration whatsoever. The door jams are nice and clean and clear. And uh, you can see the car has been used, but it's not absolutely a fresh restoration. But it, it, it's a car that is in really great condition. There's no scale or no uh, deterioration on the uh, inside of the uh, uh, door jams. The uh, sill panels are just as fresh and clean as you'd ever hope to find with the correct GM designation. Uh, daylight mirror and it's not milkied up or faded up at all, just as nice as you'd hope to have in the car. There's absolutely nothing in this car that was out of place other than a, an ornery uh, glove box lid, but uh, now it's closed, so I don't know what it is, but uh, we'll have Donnie take a look at it, or Roger take a look at it and find out why it didn't want to close the first shot. But even the, uh, the chrome on the uh, seat belt, uh, shoulder belts, is all fresh and clean. Everything on this car is just, uh, just as good and fresh as you'd ever hope to find. It's a nice Chevelle, nice exterior, nice interior. Take a look at it. It's available here at Angsters in Daytona Beach. Okay, this is uh, our drive video of our 1970 silver and black uh, SS style Chevelle, and it is an SS car. Uh, tachometer is working. You can see that. It has a great sound to it. I'm sure the speedometer is going to work because they did drive this car, so it was. Clock's not working, and we don't care. And the radio, I don't know if it works or not, but we don't care about it either. It works! Holy crap! It works! Uh, we have an oil pressure gauge that is showing us about, uh, what is it, about 70 pounds? No, 58. About 58 pounds of oil pressure right now. Um, the temperature gauge is starting to come up. Uh, gas gauge showing us a little over a quarter of a tank. Uh, the amp gauge is functioning, it is fluctuating. We give it gas, so it is definitely charging. And so all our gauges do work. Horn, horn, let's try horn. Nope, horn does not work. So you gotta roll down the window and obscene gestures work okay too. Let's see, wipers. Okay, wipers are working. Um, okay, so everything except, with the exception of the horn, uh, works as it should. So we're gonna go for a ride, see what this guy runs like. Turn signals, forgot turn signals, shit Dave. Oh, forgot. Uh, left turn signal working as it should. It's blinking away. Right turn signal, I can hear it blinking, but the light is not blinking. Our dash light needs to be replaced here. So, horn and a dash blinker right hand side. Other than that, I guess we're good to go. We're gonna go for a ride and see what this guy runs like. Runs good, I drove him already. And he shifts nice and clean and crisp just the way it should. Here, going down the road, no hands, straight as an arrow. It can't run any straighter than it does. Still no hands, and we're going down the road straight. Okay, well, there's a guy behind me, so I can't try the brakes, no hands, but we'll do that down at the bank. But uh, the steering is very, very precise. It has to do with that new steering box. I'm sure it's a high-resolution steering box. Chevelles normally do not steer this positive and this, this tight. It's a real tight, nice steering car. It has a nice, crisp sound to it. Not objectionably loud. It, it, it's two flow masters, and it just has a nice, nice sound to it. Nice, deep, throaty rumble. Nice running car. Like I said, I used it for a day or so and uh, really couldn't find anything wrong with it. Uh, I remember that turn signal not working. Huh? That's definitely not working. Uh, the turn signal is working. You can hear the blinker, but it's not functioning and showing you a little arrow on the dash. So uh, Roger will have to attack that with the horn whenever we get it back to service. Turn around here. Okay, uh, no hands. Brakes, no hands. Stop just as straight as can possibly be. Nice. <clears throat> Boy, this guy gets his farm equipment out of the way. Give this thing a little shot here. Just got to be careful. Of
inside 70. That definitely pulls the way it should. Uh, it's a nice running uh, big block Chevy. Oh yeah, it is definitely uh, working as it should. Speed all that is working fine. All the gauges are functioning as they should. Uh, temperature's up and it's not running nice on nice and cool. Uh, oil pressure's holding the same as it was, 58 uh, pounds of oil pressure. Nice straight running car, very, very, uh, real touchy steering. They have a nice high resolution steering box on this thing. Uh, good looking car, uh, driver quality car. This is not a 100 point show car. It's a car that you can take and use and have a lot of fun with and enjoy the heck out of. Um, and it's going to be very nominally priced too. It's not going to be a, a fifty-five, sixty thousand uh, dollar SS Cheval. It's going to be real surprising when you can buy this car off of Hangster's for. Nice running car. You can take it and use it anywhere you want to go with it. It's just a nice straight running car. Okay, this is the uh, underside of our uh, silver and black uh, 1970 Cheval SS. Um, really nice car. Uh, it has heavy duty sway bar in the front. It has disc brakes in the front, which everything is absolutely brand new on it. New rotors, new calipers, um, new backing plates, new associated hardware and hoses, new ball joints, uh, new shocks in the front. Uh, let's see here. Steering box, I think, is new also. I can't really say for sure, but it appears to have been replaced. It looks like a newer. Uh, steering box. Of course, the fitment arm also is new. Uh, idler arm is new also with the grease fittings on it. Conventional starter on it, not a gear reduction. The oil pan has no leaks whatsoever. You can see that on uh, the bottom of the pan and the bell housing area and the, the turbo tranny that's in it. The, um, let's see. The frame itself and the drop downs, the uh, interfender panels, there's no uh, uh, deterioration whatsoever on them. Uh, there's no uh, bends or marks or dents or anything whatsoever. Absolutely none. Original brake line still heading toward the back. Original fuel lines also on the uh, passenger side that you can see. Headers are a long tube design. Uh, they're at least a two inch. They may be a two and an eighth, but they're at least a, a two inch uh, set of primary pipes on it. One into a, a three and a half collector. <clears throat> transitioning into, I want to call them two and an eighth primary pipes going back to the uh, Flowmaster mufflers. Uh, let's see. The frame, there's no uh, marks on the frame. A couple little marks on the C channel section where it transitions from the box channel to the C channel. And that's normal for these cars. Since they are C channel, when you put a jack stand on it and put weight on it, it bends up just a little tiny bit. And that's where you got there, there there and there. Jack stands through the years and the same thing on this side. Except not there. There, 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 and then two there. Um, cross section that goes over for your transmission mount, your third mount for the powertrain, uh, is uh, <clears throat> it's all nice and uh, no leaks whatsoever in the tail shaft or the speedometer drive uh, or the tranny or the, again, nothing on the drive line, absolutely nothing. At this point, that doesn't mean a year from now you're not going to see a couple drops on the floor. It's a muscle car. You probably will. Uh, the floor pans, floor pans appear to be original. I can't say definitively, but uh, they do appear to be the original floor pans in the car. And they transition over to the uh, rocker panel area on the other side of the Z channel. <coughs> Hard to talk, look it up in the air and talking at the same time. They, uh, uh, the substructure of the floors itself is really nice. There's no uh, deterioration whatsoever on it. Still has a lot of the factory splatter undercoating that was put on by GM uh, back in the year. Uh, let's see if you miss anything up on it. Okay, the uh, original equipment, transmission cord lines, metal still going forward, and the original style heavy duty uh, GM radiator that came with a big block. Um, Parking brake is still original and functional and hooked up. It, it's, uh, it's a functional parking brake system on this vehicle. The C channel where it goes back and transitions to the box uh, frame again is just nice and clean. Uh, the box channels, you hardly ever see any uh, dents in them. They're, they're pretty stout. They're pretty, pretty hard to dent them. And there are none in this one. The uh, drive shaft has new U-joint in the back, new U-joint in the front. 
So we got two new U-joints there. Flow master mufflers, I'm going to call them the same thing too, and an eighth pipe <coughs> transitioning out, going uh, to the correct style, uh, stainless uh, oval tip uh, extensions that go out through uh, the bottom part of the bumper, underneath the bumper. Drum brakes in the back, ventilated uh, drums on them. The uh, swing arm assemblies, you can see are the, the correct style boxed type that came with the uh, SS package and the F41 suspension also. This particular vehicle does have. It has a rear sway bar and a heavy front, front bar also. The, uh, we talked earlier about <coughs> the, um, looks like someone, the fender wells are solid on this from what I can see. Uh, from under here anyway, and it looks like someone has radius the inside part of the uh, uh, the rear quarter panel so that nothing lays up on top of that ridge where the uh, fender lip uh, goes back in uh, underneath the uh, uh, quarter panel. And it looks like that's what they've done is they've put some, I don't know what it is, I'm going to call it Bondo or something, they just radius it out so that it, uh, um, it doesn't hold any crap in it. And they did the same thing with the back part. It looks like they uh, they tack welded in two panels where the drop downs would usually come down about that far in from the quarter where it rolls down under. And you can see it's nice sharp edge steel. So the, the quarter panel is still there. It's just that they put another section in so that it doesn't collect any crap in there and uh, deteriorate through the years. Just a guess. Uh, heavy duty springs in the back. Air shocks in the back also. It's got a new, newer set of air shocks in the back. Original gas tank. I don't see any um, denser dinghies in it, this, but it is the original tank. The C channel where it transitions off of the box channel about right there. Uh, it's nice and solid and straight and it goes to the back section where that C channel ties the two side C channel pieces together to give it a lot of rigidity. There's no pull marks or anything on that back section. So this thing hasn't been dragged backwards or anything through the years, or at least not disrupting that piece that uh, is in the back. 12-bolt Chevy rear, heavy-duty rear end of this thing. Another indicative point of a uh, real SS Camaro. So you got a 12-bolt rear, you got heavy-duty disc brakes in the front, you got a heavy-duty sway bar, you got the round gauges in the uh, dashboard, you have the uh, boxed-in swing arms, you have an F41 suspension. It's an SS car. The um, no leaks on uh, the uh, rear differential whatsoever, absolutely none. The uh, tires are all as new condition. I'm not saying they are brand new, but they're probably anywhere from 80 to 90 percent there from the looks of them. There, there's certainly nothing that needs replaced. It's a nice straight car underneath. It uh, has a couple of issues where, like I said, there is not <coughs> originality with the drop downs and the uh, lips in the fenders. It feels as though it's filled in for one reason or another. We don't know why, but there's definitely some uh, filler used there. Uh, again, it could be just to keep it from collecting any crap there. Whoever owned this vehicle decided that uh, uh, the floor pan itself in the trunk looks to be nice and solid and undisrupted, so I don't see where it's really rusted. There's certainly nothing rusted on the frame or the floor pans. Everything is nice and straight and clean as can be. So it's an SS car with an F41 suspension. Um, at this point, it's totally leak-free, and it's a nice driving car, which you're going to see in a minute here, because Devin and I are going to take it for a little run. And I did use it for about a day, so I do know the car runs really well. Let's hear it, Hangsters. Look at it.